Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,218. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, 1,218 to 1,220 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we have a data set, control down arrow, with over 4,000 records, control home. And this is Yahoo historical stock data. And what we want to do is create a pivot table with a slicer. So we can select any one particular year, and instantly we have, by month, the average max and min. Now what makes the pivot table so amazing for a report like this is we are actually given daily data and daily adjusted stock prices. And no way. Pivot table will allow us to roll it up into months and years easily, do multiple calculations like average, max, and min. And get this, each one of these intersecting cells is a calculation with two conditions. So May in the year 2013. So the pivot table makes this amazingly easy. Let's go over to 1218 sheet, and here's our data set. When you create a pivot table, you have field names at the top, records and rows, and empty cells all the way around. You click in one single cell, and it doesn't matter which cell, insert, pivot table, or you can use the keyboard, Alt and V. Now the pivot table dialog box will guess right because we have empty cells all the way around. The default is on a new worksheet. I'm actually going to put it on this sheet. And notice there's an underline E. So I'm going to Alt E. If I had known that in advance, I would have done Alt N V E. Now because that's selected, I can simply select like. And I'm going to very carefully put this in I3. Now when I click OK, the pivot table field list appears in a task pane on the left. Here's where our pivot table will appear. We first have to group by month, so we take date and we click and drag. Notice it says no, 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 no. But when I get down to filter, columns, rows, values, I'm allowed to drop it there. So when I see that green line and my cursor in the row area, I let go of the click. Instantly, I get a unique list of every single one of the dates, which is not what I want. So I come over here and right click to get this context sensitive menu. And down here, there it is, group. So I click. Instantly, this dialog box for grouping shows up. There's the min date, the max date. The default is months, but I don't want just months. I want also years. So when I click on years, instantly I'm telling the grouping dialog box to group by years and months. When I click OK, absolutely beautiful. There's the year, there's the month. There's the year, there's the month. Now if we look over to the row area, you see it created a new field called year. Now the date field actually is the months. I'm going to click on the year and move it up to the filter. Because really, I want to be able to filter. And I'm going to click on the drop down. And I'm going to select. 2014, just as we're creating the report. Later, we'll add a slicer over here. So right now, we have 2014 and all of our months. Now remember, our goal is to have one, two, three calculations based on our adjusted stock price close field. So watch this. I'm going to drag the field down to the values areas. The values areas allow us to make calculations on fields. Now the default is sum, and we'll change that to average. Now we need it to drop this field two more times, because we're going to add the max, and we're going to add the min calculation to each one of these fields. Now let's close this pivot table field list, and I'm going to scroll over. In turn, we're going to have to change the calculation and the number formatting for each one of these columns. Now I'm going to come and click in one cell in this first column, right click. And down here, summarize values as allows us to change the function. The first one is going to be average. Now I want to change the number formatting because that's too many decimals. Right click, and we don't want format cells, we want number formatting. Anytime you're doing a pivot table, this special number formatting option will appear. And we click, and we want to choose currency. And I'm going to leave it as two decimals. This will display the numbers as currency with two decimals. Now we can 
come up to the top here, and I'm simply going to type A V E and so enter. Now I'm going to change the column width point between J and K and click and drag. Now we want to change the calculation for each one of these. Right click, summarize values by, there's our max. Right click, number formatting, and I'm going to select currency, OK. Right click, summarize values by, and this one's min. Right click, number formatting, and why don't we do currency? Same formatting on each one. So now we have our three calculations. I want to type max, tab, min, Minimum. and enter. Now, this is not a good name, row label, so I'm going to click there and simply type months, months and enter. Now, we can change the column width so they're all the same, but watch this. I'm going to click on the I and drag over to L, and I can click between any two column headers and click and drag, and instantly they're all the same. I'm going to click inside and go up to design. This is a preference. I'm going to say report layout and show in tabular because I want to see those gray lines. Now, notice something. Anytime we change the pivot table, the columns are changing. So I'm going to change the property, right click down in pivot table options. And on the layout and format, let's uncheck auto fit columns, widths on update. Uncheck that. Now I'm going to change the column widths and they will stick. Now, we could change all of our years using the filter, but no way. We're going to add a slicer going up to the Pivot Table Tools, Analyze. And over in the Filter group, there's Insert Slicer. I'm going to check Year, click OK. Now, let's make this slicer cool. I'm going to come up to the Slicer Tools Options. In Columns, I'm going to say 5, Enter point to the edge of the slicer, and we could adjust the slicer size and the column widths. Click and drag. That's looking pretty good. It looks like I have some ghosts there without any data, so I'm going to right click, Slicer Settings. And down here, Hide Items with No Data. Check, click OK. That is looking amazing. I could click 2012, 2013, and instantly. 1996 and what? You mean when Yahoo opened it was $1.24 average in April? No, these are adjusted close price. They're adjusted for stock split. That way we can properly compare any current price. They're all in the same unit. Now I actually want to change this and move this down. I want a, a title at the top. So I'm going to highlight with my cursor. And watch this. I'm going to highlight. And I'm going to use the Move cursor, not the Crosshair or Angry Rabbit, not the Selection cursor. But there's our Move cursor. I'm pointing to the edge. Click and drag down 1, 2. And then I'm going to click in I1 and type Yahoo Historical Adjusted Stock Price and Enter. Whoa, it actually looks like it's copying the format from our table over there. I'm going to highlight all the way to from I1 to L1, go up to Home, and select some color. Font, select some font color. And actually, under Borders, I'm going to select Outside Border. Now, look at this. The ribbons were collapsed, and once I click up here, they're kind of open, so I have to click Escape to turn them off. Wow, that is looking amazing. Look at that. I select any year I want, and instantly we have our average, min, max for a particular month and year. All right, we'll see you next video.